So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, maybe I can start by uh, introducing uh, the speakers we're lucky to have for this panel discussion today. Uh, we can start maybe with, um, with Tommy. So Tommy here is working at HTC Vive Originals, uh, which is a VR studio within HTC. Uh, they are the producers uh, behind uh, director Timing Young first uh, uh, VR feature film. They're also the co-producer of Gloomy Eyes, which is a co-production between uh, France and Taiwan, uh, co-produced with Atlas V and 3DAR, that is presented here at New Image um, this year. Uh, next to him is uh, Apu, Apu Chang. Uh, you're the CEO of Funic, which is an innovative company specializing in 8K uh, VR. Um, they're also the co-producer of some films that you may have seen uh, last year or this year here at New Images, including Your Spiritual Temple Sucks, uh, After Image for Tomorrow, that is presented this year, and a uh, live stream from Yuki. Uh, next to him is uh, John Xu. Uh, John is a uh, um, is well-established uh, uh, short film uh, director. Uh, you've uh, directed the first uh, VR film two years ago in 2017 that was produced by Gaussian Film Archive and Serendipity. Um, the film was called uh, Your Spiritual Temple Sax, also co-produced co with Funic. Um, it was presented at New Images uh, last year, and you have some new project, feature film, and also some new VR project. And next to John is Estela. Um, Estela is an independent producer specializing in uh, feature film, international co-production. She's also the producer of Your Spiritual Temple Sax. Um, and uh, she's also, um, most importantly, she's the co-producer of the first French Taiwan uh, VR co-production, Mechanical Souls. Uh, you have new VR projects, uh, maybe you can tell us more about it um, in a few um, minutes. So the idea of this roundtable is to give you an overview of um, the, this VR ecosystem, 10,000 kilometers uh, from here, uh, in all its diversity from um, industry leaders to uh, startups to uh, independent producers and creative um, filmmakers. And uh, we will start with a, a quick tour um, with a short question to each of you so you can maybe introduce uh, with more details what you're doing. So maybe we can start with Tommy. Um, as we all know, Taiwan counts uh, several uh, industry leaders and manufacturers such as HTC, Asus, uh, MSI, S Acer. Um, but you're part of HTC Vive Originals department, which is actually um, making VR films. Uh, so maybe you can tell us a few words to introduce what you do, what type of content, and why, um, and how it's interconnected with the uh, Vive ecosystem. Today, I'm very happy to introduce the Vive Originals team in HTC. Today, I'm very glad to come here to share with you the HTC Vive Originals team. Okay. Uh, 2016年, uh, HTC uh, 之前从硬挺开始切入, 那2016年正是成立一个专属的内容团队, Vive Original. Uh, 2016, uh, the starting point of HTC is from the hardware side, and after that, we create uh, HTC uh, Studio for the VR content. 那呃，成立这个内容团队的目的，呃，并不是只有只专注在内容的制作，呃，从希望从呃内容这个角度来切入，拉起整个产业的生态链。So uh, uh, to work on the VR content, we are not only focused on the content, but we but we try to use the content as a starting point to get into the Taiwan's VR ecosystem. 那所以要做到這件事情,我們就分幾個面向,其中一個最重要就是當內容有了以後,我們要建立起這個商業的渠道跟平台來做這個商業的發布跟這個銷售。So we can start from a few dimensions. On the presentation you can see that we have content and after the content we need the distribution channels to release all these contents. 那接下來就是當我們有這個平台之後,我們同時也會目前專注在做這些商務渠道背後所需要的系統工具。
So after the distribution, we, we uh, continue to do the platform. And after that, we try to make some tools for you to uh, integrate everything. 那這個就是我們目前這個團隊所專注在從事的這個任務。So that's exactly the focus of our team now. 那這是我們很簡短的對這個我們目前Viva Regional 這個團隊所做的事情一個簡短的介紹,謝謝。So it's a small introduction for you to know about our team about Vive Originals and thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Uh, Apu, you're the CEO of uh, Funic, which is a very unique company that has uh, developed outstanding capabilities uh, in 8K stereo 3D VR. Um, you focus on content from shooting to post-production and also VR theater. Uh, you've been involved in commercials, education, film production. Um, my question is, where is your company heading to? Um, and what do you believe is Funic's uh, place and the role you would like this company to play in the Taiwan ecosystem. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm so glad to come to see you guys. Funica is focused on the VR network. Funica always focus on the content of 8K contents. Yes, I want to talk to you 接下来 AK 的这样子的内容将会对应到我们未来的即将要来临的5G的这个时代。So what I want to say is that the AK content will correspond to the future of 5G。所以在这个5G的这个时代里面，它将会面临到它会有需要有一个更高的呃需要更更高阶的一个更沉浸感的一个内容的一个享受的一个体验的内容。so to satisfy this need, we need a, a 5G environment to truly have this kind of immersive feeling. So Funica has been working for After two or three years, uh, Funica contributes to a lot of the integration of the VR content. 我們希望可以用這樣子的技術,像我們在台灣,我們有結合到很好的導演許漢強,然後我們拍出原神工這樣子的內容,所以我們希望未來它即將會有很大量的需要內容的一個需求。So uh, that's why uh, for example we have a very nice content thanks to the collaboration with director Shi to make your spiritual temple sucks. 所以我們也即將會需要有更 人把這個大量產出來的產值的中心的這樣的概念可以跟大家一起來學合作。We uh, need more people to get into this ecosystem and collaborate with each other and to satisfy this needs of uh, immersive contents. 所以這個是我們未來我覺得大家可以在 Funic從台灣出發,那可以跟全世界的夥伴們一起來合作的一些的方向。so the vision of Funic is truly uh, to start from Taiwan, but Funic welcomes to uh, embrace the opportunities to work with the partners all over the world. Thank you. Uh, Estela and John, you, you both um, come from film background, and you jumped into VR uh, two years ago uh, with this first uh, experience, uh, Your Spiritual Temple Sucks. Uh, can you... As people who come from film background, can you tell us uh, of your experience of um, you know jumping into the, that ecosystem two years ago and how things have changed, uh, how it was for you first as independent filmmaker and producer, and how things have changed um, in the past two years? Hi everyone. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that um, it's been a very serendipitous uh, journey for us. Uh, I like saying it because we started uh, the whole um, uh, Spiritual Temple Sucks with an idea of just uh, a field research that we wanted to create a feature film that has a, a VR and AR background. And uh, when we got given the opportunity to uh, to make a VR short, uh, you know, so we, we kind of started thinking like, okay, we want to know how well, how people will be affected by this new way of storytelling. So, um, 
uh, once our hands get into it, we realize there are so many things that's so different from uh, the classical filmmaking, the way that we understand how people relate to stories. So, uh, and with that in mind, we really just get our hands dirty and just go through it. Yeah, uh, for me, before becoming a filmmaker, I was like really into game development. I was, I always thought that I would be one of the game de game develop de developers, but then I got into filmmaking anyway. So uh, uh, when we are giving this, uh, we're having this invitation from Kaohsiung Film Festival that asked us to make a VR film. Uh, it was uh, kind of like a, a fantastic discovery of what I'm supposed to do because uh, even for my short film that I created like uh, during my career, it's all about the digital culture and also the how we can make the, the gaming element into a film. So uh, with VR, it's like a perfect match. So in your spiritual temple sax, we kind of experiment on every kind of method we want to try. And to add in on that is um, when we just started that the, the, the ecosystem in Taiwan doesn't really exist because uh, there were just very limited resources from Kaohsiung Film Archive. And it was a Kickstart uh, fund that was in a lot. And thanks to Funic that they were very into the project. So they really um, put in a lot of technical investment and really worked with us to find the best solution for the project. And uh, that we, with this project, we were able to uh, kind of create a conversation in Taiwan about how um, um, how cultural content can be reflected with uh, virtual reality, and that's kind of a ripple effect. So, like literally one year ago, when I was here in New Images. I think I wasn't able to offer that much to most people. I wouldn't be able to tell them that there are all these financial resources, technical resources. But just doing this one year, a lot of people have, a lot of things happened. A lot of people got into it, and uh, the Ministry of Culture also uh, are convinced that technical content will be uh, the new export for the, our Taiwanese content. So that, that's a ripple effect that just happened within one year. And um, well, tomorrow there will be a presentation about the Kaohsiung Film Archive, but maybe you can tell us more about the connection between Funic and your company, because you're very much focused on technology, and you're, of course, uh, focused on the, the content and the story itself. So how did the connection happen? Was that through the Kaohsiung Film Archive? Um, how did you meet and decide to work together at that time for that project when not so much support exists in Taiwan? Um, John is the one that's the tech savvy one between us. I'm a producer that I, I really um, am curious on different things. And so during the time that we were given the opportunity, we actually met different uh, technical partners, potential technical partners. We had many meetings. And uh, it was Funic that kind of uh, was able to provide us different uh, creativity during the process because uh, John wanted to know that what uh, kind of technology can be used in his project. And he likes to uh, create content with those possibilities. So there are a lot of things that happen in the final project wasn't in the script at the beginning. And I think John can share a little bit more on that. Yeah, because uh, the narrative in traditional filmmaking is so much different than VR. And the uh, one thing that's, I think that's the most important part is that your, uh, your, uh, uh, the, the perspective of the audience is completely different. It's like you can look around and you actually feel the presence at the, to, at the location. So uh, uh, when we figure, uh, when we uh, saw some of the, the tech demo from Funic, we realized that actually you can, it's not about telling a story anymore. It's, 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 a, it's more about how you are throwing uh, the audience to a space that never exists. So uh, uh, what we experiment for experimental uh, for spiritual temple sex was that uh, we're trying to create uh, two different dimension. 
which is the spiritual temple part and also the real world. And, and it's, it's, it's impossible for traditional filmmaking for traditional filmmaking to uh, make the audience feel that you're actually like between the two dimensions. So that's one thing that we're, we were experimenting on by putting the portal behind us that you can look around and see the other side of the world. And Apu, how, how did you decide to get involved uh, in that project and how did, did it um, match what you were trying to achieve? Okay. First of all, we want to thank uh, Kaohsiung Film Festival. Because Kaohsiung Film Festival is the one who trusts Funic, the, the technique, and they help to match with the genius uh, director. Can we give some applause to... So, it's truly that the encouragement from Kaohsiung Film Festival is so important for both of us. We are so glad also to receive the script from director Xi uh, because his script is truly have a potential in the commercial market and it has a very comedy element and also it's very humorous. So actually, uh, uh, in my company, we have lots of fans of Director Xi, so you know what's happening after. So when we meet such a director, so we think we are so fortunate to meet Dr. Sh uh, Director Xi, and, uh, but at the same time, we explained him also the limitation in the technology, so maybe it makes him frustrated. So I really thank, I really, uh, I really very grateful for the Director Xi because he still creates something so nice with all this limitation behind. And the biggest uh, return from this project is truly to see uh, how can a director to use this kind of new narrative to do the new type of VR film. 对，虽然它会让你很忙的，一百八十度一直在那边来回转来转去这样。Although it truly it it makes the audience very busy. You have to see like one eighty degree and to see there and see that. 所以这个是在整个的创作过程当中，其实就是遇到一个很好的伙伴。对，所以当时我们制作这个这一支片的时候，其实整个团队是非常的非常的喜欢这条片子。so it's truly an honor to meet with director Xi and collaborate with him and to finally to make the film. Okay. So is super lucky to meet with him. Okay. Before we, we explore further the characteristics of the Taiwan ecosystem, one last question about content uh, to Tommy. Uh, your company um, has been producing um, content that is like non-animated, like live, 360, um, while uh, HTC Vive is uh, like allows interactive experiences. So why this choice of 360 and some of the content is also quite long, uh, one hour, more than one hour sometimes. And, um, and one of your latest uh, production, which is co-production, is uh, animation. So what's your strategy and what are you aiming at? producing in terms of content.
呃，我们的团队在一开始成立的时候就被赋予一个任务，呃，我们并不是一个 production house， 呃，我们比较像是一个呃 lab。We have the mission from the very beginning. We are we are not like a production house, but we more like a lab. 嗯，我们需要去为我们的公司找到呃新的技术的方向啊。我们做技术的研发，同时我们去开创新的内容的呃可能的制作方向。We want to find a new direction in terms of technology, and at the same time to find a new directions for the contents. 所以在我们选择内容的种类跟方向的时候，基本上我们是没有任何的限制的。So about the variety and the selection of the content, basically we have no limit. 呃，我们希望为 VR 的这个内容找出新的可能性，并且希望在这过程里面把我们累积下来的 know how 跟 pipeline 的这个知识，呃 ，share 给所有愿意进入这个领域的伙伴们。The first point is. We truly want to uh, uh, know about to try to find more possibility for the VR contents, and at the same time, we want we would like to share all this know-how, all these pipelines with you. Um, maybe a question for Estela. Your first VR project was made. Oh, sorry, was made with local director, local producer, and fundings, local technology. Um, from there, how did you decide uh, on your second pro project to go for um, a co-production, this time an international co-production with France? Well, uh, actually it started still with your Spiritual Temple Sucks because uh, by, by distribution, the stage of distribution, we realized that uh, the Taiwan VR industry hasn't really been that connected to the rest of the world. So uh, we worked with uh, White VR. And uh, we were uh, we we actually work with a French distributor to try to find an outreach for the project, and it really kind of established us uh, in in Europe with uh, what we the kind of uh, either a creative a creative or technology kind of aspect. People realized there is some possibility in Taiwan. And also from another standpoint is that there is not enough of uh, uh, Asian content uh, for Chinese speaking territories. And uh, so it's kind of hard to really create an ecosystem when there's not enough content. So there is a lot of great work uh, internationally. There are a lot of good artists that's been doing their work. And so we start thinking, the company start thinking that maybe uh, getting on board in the early stage with international projects, we can uh, also help a project to create a, a new, a new um, audience and also help building the ecosystem in Taiwan. So uh, that's kind of uh, what we kind of have in mind when we started, uh, when, when we were already distributing your spiritual temple sucks. And the whole co-production strategy is coming from feature film. I mean, that's been happening for a very long time and it's been very successful for the European uh, film industry because you know, a lot of projects are created that way. So uh, with limited resource domestically, to introduce that kind of strategy into Taiwan, we believe um, that we'll be able to balance resources so we are not just alone in a, a very heavy investment in Taiwan. Uh, we will have international partner to balance that as well. So uh, that's kind of what we had in mind uh, to search on projects that we're interested in, and that's kind of how it led to Mechanical Souls. And to me, uh, on your latest project, you've also been involved into, in a co-production. So why this choice to, this time, not produce something in-house, but be involved in a project that was built uh, outside of Taiwan, a Gloomy Eyes? And do you plan to do more co-production in the future as well? Okay. 呃，是的，嗯，因为我们毕竟是一个呃小的团队，啊，不可能所有的事情都自己去完成它。Yes, because we our team is not so big, so we cannot finish everything by ourselves. 呃，尤其是 VR 这一个全新的领域，呃，它能够跟各种的呃其他领域来做跨界的结合，所以它的可能性非常的多。
那在这种状况底下，如果我们什么事情都打算自己做，那一定一定不可能做得好。那对于产业也没有任何的帮助。Especially they have lots of potentials of collaboration between the VR and other industry. So if we try to make everything ourselves, it's not so possible. 所以，我们呃，从一开始尝试开发技术之后，我们就积极的寻找各个在制作呃，在在制作这一个环节上面呃，各个的伙伴。So after the beginning that we start, we started from the technical side. From then on, we try to find the partners in the whole process of production. 呃，所以呃。从三六零影片开始，我们跨入，接着跨入了这个 VR 互动的作品。那今年我们开始有一些呃 Six d o f 的这个 Animation 的合作。那未来每一个时期，我们都会找一些不同的呃题目来呃专注去发展。So uh, after the 360, uh, we get into another phase. And we will keep on、uh, searching the partners to do more、uh, collaborating project in the future. 那呃，接下来从今年开始，我们已经有计划，有计划呃，持续的在呃全世界各个不同的国家找合作的伙伴。那今年有好呃有好几个案子开始跟法国这边做合作。那我们也会持续的努力找。呃，各个领域的优秀伙伴一起来扩展 VR 的生态圈。From this year,、uh, we we started to find the partners all over the world, and actually, we currently we also have the French partners, and、uh, we expect it, we expect to find more partners and to develop this ecosystem、uh, with another phase. And Apu, you've been focusing mostly on local content so far, but what's the international strategy of、uh, Funic? Are you looking for international partners? What kind of collaboration are are you looking for and trying to develop? 就刚才我们所提到的，就是呃 ，Funic 已经默默的在准备，就是 Barkley TV 啊，产制中心啊的整个的流程。So actually, uh, Funic. Is currently、uh, working on the whole、uh, production of the AK. 这里面就是为了就是准备的，就是可以跟国际更多的团队一起来合制更多的一些的内容。So we try to make all this pipeline, make the, all this preparation is truly to find more opportunity to collaborate with the international groups. 在因为八 K 的这样子的很繁复的一个制作的一个一个流程里面，所以当如果我们没有准备好的时候，其实它是没有办法面对未来。如果它有爆发性的一个需求的量的时候，你是没有办法去产出这些量的。In the complicated pipeline of producing AK, we have to be prepared for every step, every phase. If we didn't do it now. We, it's hard for us to do scale up after. 那这些所有的准备，其实就是为了刚才所提到的五 G 的时代的来临。So all this preparation is、uh, correspond to what we say about the coming of 5G. 所以接下来我们公司，我们也会将再带来一些新的一些的科技，包含就是呃立体 VR 的直播的技术。So in the future, our company will bring more new inno innovation. For example,、uh, new 3D、uh, stream technology. So we will focus on the sports 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 Explains that、uh, our our hopes to truly collaborate with more international players to develop more international projects. So all of you have、uh, produced several、uh, VR works in the past、uh, few years.、Uh, what would you say is、uh, truly specific to Taiwan, other maybe than the hardware?、Um, 
what would be the strength of this ecosystem where everything seems to um, happen so quickly, actually. Estela, maybe? <laughs> yeah, um, well, I think it first comes from the part that Taiwan is a place that has a lot of um, freedom and creativity. And uh, I think that that really gives uh, a lot of space for uh, you know nurturing really good artists. And then uh, with that, you know, we mentioned that we got tech company like HTCs that has been supporting content. And in that sense, that we are basically finding an identity that's been there. People know that Taiwan's been a tech island, and uh, but the pa in the past when you, when when I used to work in feature film. We never speak with uh, tech companies. Tech companies never pay for films, and uh, they never really pay for content. But then when it comes to VR, we actually found a mutual language because we are imagining a different uh, um, possibility for the next 10 years. And I think that this, this, the ripple effect that I was mentioning earlier uh, happened because the, the, the government also noticed that. Noticed that this uh, cultural content and technology putting together that really created a lot of strength and curiosity with audiences. Uh, we have a um, Kaohsiung Film Archive that has a VR theater opened up last the end of last year. And uh, this is a concept most people don't understand, but you you see that uh, a lot of curious audiences passing by, just you know, very willingly trying out new technology and content and really enjoying it. They have a very good um, reception over there every day. So I think this is something that keeps getting the government excited. So they really want to see um, good result in, in a very short term. I mean, I like to talk about the downside as well, because of course. because uh, obviously, um, with all this government support, that they want to see very quick, very fast, uh, um, uh, complete of a project. And it, it works really well when you have something very clear and very well developed and you can push it through. But obviously, that when you have something that's in a very early stage, it takes, uh, it makes it, it makes it more difficult for uh, people to to try to extend the, the the production pipeline because of the fact we might want to be sure that we are jumping into something that could really create good things. This is something we talked about before that is the opposite of friends, maybe. And uh, I think that's also the reason that I really like uh, working with French uh, team. And that's what I learned from my French co-producers is that we are learning from each other's experience. That we have too short of a timeline. They have a, ver they, they have a different pace. And how do we find that pace together? And John, as a filmmaker, you had a lot of experience in um, directing short films. Um, when you decided to go, um, like to make VR film, what were the, the strengths um, of the Taiwan ecosystem that you found? Um, what were maybe the, the biggest challenges for you? Mm. To, to me, it's actually not that uh, limited, like Pu just said, because uh, I guess it's because coming from the gaming culture experience that I'm familiar with, uh, so the, the transition wasn't that bad for me. Uh, the, the thing is that uh, narrative in VR is like a completely new thing, and it's so young, it's like everyone's trying to invent a, di a different language. It's like uh, right now, it's like we're creating something that's never been seen before, so it's like everyone is like trying to figure it out. And uh, uh, to me, it's like uh, it's the you have to have a, to to switch a mindset as a as a filmmaker to a, a, a new a storyteller that's a trying trying different media. So uh, yeah, that's probably it. And to me and Apu, um, what would you say are the challenges for the next 12 months? Like there's been a lot of attention on Taiwan VR um, in the past year, but what are for you, for your two companies, 
the biggest challenges to strengthen your position and the position of this ecosystem? Uh, for Funic, we have the advantage is that we start from thinking about the application part. And after that, we find that what, which kind of contents is correspond to our needs. 虽然我们都很专注在内容上面，那内容上面其实我们除了电影以外，我们还focus在就是呃呃巴克利TBI的昆虫频道，还有手术教学平台。So even if we are very focused on contents and this include a lot a lot of different industry, for example, like the insect uh, channels, the medical part, uh, the film entertainment. 甚至我们刚才所提到的就是直播的部分 Even about the live streaming on sports or concerts 所以对Funic来讲比较急的比较大的挑战反而是如何好好的就是真的是落实把这几个我们很focus的项目真的很扎实的让它变成是一个应用让它落入到消费者的手中让它在生活当中可以去使用 So the biggest challenge for Funic will be how to truly transform all these um, uh, poles, main poles, all this, uh, the medical part, the entertainment, uh, the streamline, to truly to make it success successfully and correspond to our market. 对,所以这是我们目前觉得就是整个时间上很急的原因,因为真的是跟时间在赛跑。So that's why we think we don't have so much time and we work hard every day and we 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 are like have a have a race with the time uh 关于这一点对HTC来讲,我必须很坦白地说,虽然HTC是一个从硬体技术切入的这个公司, uh, uh, for HTC, uh, we are a company who starting from the hardware, 但是我们必须很坦白来说，现在这个不管是VR相关的这些硬体设备，基本上都还是在过渡时期，它还不是非常的完美。But to be honest, all the equipment, the technical side of VR, uh, is still uh, in the process of transition. They are not perfect enough. 所以HTC其实同时一直在思考的是，在这些设备逐步完善的过程里面，它需要时间。so what HTC think thinks is that we need time to do this transition. Although the life cycle of our VR equipment is very short, roughly six months to a year we have a new product in VR. 所以在这个过渡期里面，它真这个产业持续要往前走，真正重要的是这些内容是不是能够真的被这些广大的群众来呃接受，去看到，能够打动他们，然后真正在他们日常生活里面有呃某个程度的运用。In this transition process. The key point is truly whether our content could be uh, accepted by our audience and could be applied by our partners. So in this time, 在每一个层面都让这个观众能够感受到感动。So from this point, what HTC works really hard is truly to work on the content and to let the audience to accept all these contents and to have a, a very strong immersive feeling and to uh, help uh, to help this transition. 这会是HTC在未来这一年甚至短时间里面会持续努力做的事情 
So that's the main task uh, of HTC uh, in this short period of time. Um, as um, Estella has mentioned, there's been a lot of support from the Taiwan government in the past few months. Uh, also, the um, Gaoxiong Film Archive has been producing five-year films every year, and they've started to open um, some slots for international co-productions. Um, there is more content being produced, and uh, how do you see, like, as you mentioned, like, your spiritual temple socks has been distributed by a French company, by Wide. So what's, uh, what do you think of um, the distribution? How do you, how do you handle how do you handle such an amount of, um, you know, like productions and how do you share it with the world? How do you make sure that it reach, it can reach the audience outside of Taiwan? I mean, for your spiritual temple sex, I mean, we didn't give it so much of a, to, I mean, we weren't that big of a, ambition you know we, we were really just uh, trying to um, help people know that we can create VR content so uh, the mission with wide is uh, at the time like you know the whole one year of distribution is try to get to reach all of you the industry player uh, so every one of you can really um, get to know what kind of work we can do in Taiwan. So, but then uh, follow up to that. I think that this year it has uh, changed a lot for 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 me, for us. I think is very much thinking further on of how do you create experience for audience to relate to. So uh, because to really con convince people that's outside of the industry is is to put on the headset. And uh, we were always, we, we, all, we, we now know what VR is and we're always going to be willing to wear headsets and watch something new. But not the people that have no idea, not me when I was two years ago. And uh, I think that um, uh, creating experience and creating the outs, like what's attached to it is very important. And that's kind of why uh, for Mechanical Souls, uh, we kind of do a different strategy because we know that uh, if we passively just wait for uh, audiences to put on headset, it's kind of something that we don't know how it's gonna grow. We have to kind of create experience that they, already can somehow connect to it. For instance, people that, uh, I think that a lot of work that have done uh, gallery curations, you, you connect to uh, some digital arts that, uh, that's external, that people can already relate to what that is. And with Mechanical Souls, we did uh, a theater play that audiences can uh, interact with something that they kind of know what it is already. So in that way, you can guide them into this uh, 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 new, new content. And uh, I think this reflects internationally and domestically because uh, for, uh, for us in, in, in Taiwan, I, I, this is the, the most difficult thing is to uh, bring the content to your audience instead of passively waiting for your, content, your, your audiences to say, oh, I wake up this morning, I want to go to watch VR. I don't think that uh, we are in that stage yet. But if we bring it to the audience, which is like, you know, locations that they always go, like, you know, art venues or you say, let's just say hipster neighborhood, that they are going to be connected to it because this is something that they would be curious and that then there's something around it that seems very familiar, then they will, they will try to try it out and then realize maybe that somehow they can connect to it. So this is something that uh, we do with Mechanical Souls and the, the further projects that uh, Mechanic, uh, Serendipity has been producing that we uh, focus on other than the content inside, what's the experience overall? so we can uh, reach out to uh, more audiences that hasn't tried out uh, VR yet. And Tommy, can you say a few words about the, how HTC plans to bring that content that your studio is producing to the world? What's the main channel? What's the strategy for you to share those? How do you share those works? Uh 
呃商业渠道跟平台的平台的建立。那我们目前的计划是分这个线上跟线下两个不同的方向来做。那目前的状况在线上上面，我们有比如说 Five Port 跟啊、呃、这个 Five Port Arcade 的这个两个不同的平台。So, uh, so, uh, in the presentation, we have the three main points of HTC, and one of them is about the distribution platform, and we have two different、uh, distribution way. One is online, another one. Is The online part is、uh, called Vive Arcade,、uh, and the offline one is Vive Land. Okay. Uh, 刚呃、uh, 一个是这个 online 的这个频道呃平台，那另外一个是 offline 的频道。那 offline 的频道是这个 Vive Land。那我们透过这些不同平台的建立，让所有的这个内容制造者能够自助的。自己去做这个上架的这个管理的这个呃发布。By creating this、uh, distribution platform, the、uh, content developer, the content creators, they can uh, 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 distribute their own works on the platform. 那同时在这个平台背后，我们现在正在着手一个这个区块链的数位版权的管理。呃，机制。And currently, we are also doing the research on the blockchain copyright、um, management. Okay, one last question.、Uh, we've been talking about、uh, production, about distribution, about the characteristics of this ecosystem.、Um, as we、uh, just said, like there is a strong push for content、um, in Taiwan.、Um, also, cities such as Gaoxiong are welcoming. Uh, foreign companies can open an office there.、Um, do you think that、um, with Taiwan's、um, free environment,、uh, lower production cost,、uh, Mandarin-speaking talents, and tech companies, do you think Taiwan could position itself as a hub for producing Chinese-speaking content, as it could actually、um, do the same for film and television? But it seems even more obvious、uh, for VR. So. 呃，我想在这个时间点跟这个产业发展的这个目前的现况上面 ，At this moment， 呃，台湾的确占有一个很好的位置跟时机。Taiwan have a very good timing and position。呃，因为在呃很少数的这个产业上面，台湾目前呃在 VR 这个相关的领域上面，同时拥有这个软体的。呃，创意跟硬体的技术，那在这个部分，我们目前在全世界上面都有领先的优势。So in Taiwan, uh, in the VR industry, we really have the advantage. It's because we have the soft power part that means the creativity, the content, but at the same time, we have the support from the hardware. 呃，呃，当然，现在这这个啊、呃，整个环境的进步非常快。那所有的竞争也非常激烈。那我们如何台湾能够在这个呃快速发展的产业环境里面，呃，把握这短短的时间，我们目前有啊比较好的立足点。那我想是所有台湾产这个产业里面的这个伙伴，必须一起共同来努力的。And we can say that the industry now is become more and more competitive, and there's more and more players came came into the VR industry. So what we can do now is truly、uh, we can integrate, we can collaborate with other players in Taiwan, and we try to find a solution. From Phoenix's perspective, it is true. 呃，台湾是一个现在是一个很好的一个机会，可以去创造出一个呃，就是呃，在传统影视可能做不到的一个位置。呃、uh, ，from the point of view of Phoenix， 呃、uh, ，we also think we we are agreeing that， 呃、uh, ，now is a very 呃、uh, very good timing for Taiwan。To get a, a position in the VR industry, and we can, which we could not reach with the traditional、uh, audiovisual industry.
。所以更重要的是，我们一定是需要连接全世界、国际上面所有的呃好手一起来做这些事情。So the most critical point is truly to collaborate with all the international players and to uh. Enlarge our ecosystem to welcome more players came into it and try to work with them. Let's work together to make 8K reality VR. So let's make the 8K VR together. I think that、oh, that's exactly what everybody is trying to do: trying to、uh, work all together to create an Asian hub. For、uh, technology content, and especially、uh, the government has been—I think I haven't shared—I say they've been supporting a lot. But、uh, to be more precise, that they are creating sound labs in Taiwan that's working with Aircom, and we have a volumetric lab that's、uh, building in Taiwan. So in some sense, it's like you know, once you get、uh, the support from the government, you have all the access of.、Um, Of using the sound lab and volumetric lab, and that's that's exactly what the Ministry of Culture in Taiwan is doing. We're trying to、uh, cover every aspect of、uh, technology content, and to help the industry uh, players, uh, domestic industry players, to have um, have uh, strength to work with international players.、Yeah. Thank you. So maybe we have time for one or two questions from the audience. Is there any question? Yes. Do, do you want me to repeat? <laughs> so I think it just continues. It's like how far do you, like how so what kind of position it is right now for、um, the AK stereo content in this kind of like、uh, at this at this stage. From Phoenix's perspective, we will try to. 8K 立体 VR 这个定位是一个 VR 的一个呃标配的原因是，哦，因为就是我们深信的，就是高品质的这件事情呢，是完全是实现，就是在我们在讲述 VR 的第一步，最高沉浸感的第一步。那更重要的，故事的精神才是让我们走进到这个。故事里面可以去享受到整个的体验，最重要的一件事情。Don't so first of all,、uh, we think that the important point is that we have a very good quality, very quality-minded in ER、uh, in VR industry is super important, and after that is truly based on、um, the immersive feeling. 所以八 K 立体八 K 的高品质，我们常常在讲的是说，它其实就像我们在呼吸一样。其实它是很重要于无形当中。So, uh, the AK stereo technology is super important, and just like, uh, our breath. 所以有这样子的一个前提之下，才有办法真的让我们戴上黑色，进入到 VR 的世界，去感受到 VR 所带个呃带出的呃的故事是有截然不同的，让我们有截然不同的这样子的一个体验。So once you have this technology of AK stereo technology,、uh, you can truly see totally another world in VR and truly to understand VR better.、Um, to add on to that, I think I can share is that I think right now we are all in a very early stage of.、Um, Um, with you know, with the hardware、uh, accessibility and all that. So,、uh, but if we do、uh, stereoscopic AK, we're basically giving our content a longer life, and we are you know growing with、uh, with the technology. But we are offering the content a, a longer life to to meet more audiences, and you know not to be you know replaced just because that is changed by technology. And that's thinking long. Long term, because like you know, Apple said, 5G and that that the, the future coming up, that we we can be ready for it. Chinese, 
Oh, to post. Okay. okay. Um, so I think a follow-up question is that um, um, how, like, when do you think this technology can be more, um, more um, accessible for, for example, the rep to, to to the rest of the content creators? Uh, sorry, I was like trying to figure out what your question is. It's like uh, you're asking uh, what this like high resolution VR technology is going to help the VR content in a creative way. I think this like is like is like uh, that when this technology is going to be more um, accessible to the other for for the other content creators to use this one to create more, for example, like AK stereo content. It on. I'm not sure if that's the question for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, in the VR world, in the VR 二零一五 G 的时代来临了，将会是这个需求会是一个哦进入到家庭端的一个时刻。So from the point of view of the telecom communication、uh, company, we will we'll say that the coming of the the era of 5G will be the moment that it will be accessible for everyone. 那在现阶段，我相信是线下的特展的一个方式，是一个很好的，就是高级的影院的一个享乐的方式，是可以让他们现在马上就可以接触到的一个方式。So currently, I think that the offline expo, uh, for example, like VR theater, that might be a very good way for the audience to, uh, 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 content, uh, have the touching point with all this VR content. <laughs> Thank you so much.